One thing, by the way, I want you to be careful for, and I've seen a lot of students make this uh, mistake. They get confused between the angular momentum equation and the kinetic energy equation. You see here, I omega. The kinetic energy is half I omega squared. So sometimes people put here I omega squared for the angular momentum. So uh, they get confused. Angular momentum is just I omega. Just like linear momentum is mv, right? It's not mv squared. Linear momentum is mv. Kinetic energy is half mv squared, right? So same thing, angular momentum, there's no square. Kinetic energy, there is a square, half I omega squared. So this one now becomes uh, 9 is equal to V1 squared plus 5 V center of mass squared plus this one is uh, 6 point, uh, 6.67, right? You divide that by right. Okay, so that's what my, that's my third equation. Okay, so now I'm going to solve for these three unknowns. The best way to do it is to go back to your first and second equation and find which variable is in both of those equations. Okay, which which variable do they both share? Notice that they both have V1 in it. This one has V1, V center of mass. This one has V1, omega final. So since V1 is in both of those, we can eliminate the other one. We can solve for V center of mass. This is the quickest way to do it. V center of mass is equal to 3 minus V1 over 5. And then over here, V1 is the one that they both share, so so for omega final. Say 5.4 minus 1.8 V1 over 13.33. Then substitute this and this into that equation, because then you will only have one variable. So it'll be 9 plus 5 V center of mass plus 6.67, minus 1.8. V1 over 13.33 squared. After this, it gets a little bit, uh, after that, it's just algebra. You know, Square that, square that, expand it. You have one variable. Now, if you're feeling in a lazy mood, go to your TI at this point and just put in this equation as it is. It should spit out two answers for you. If you feel like you want to do it yourself, you can expand it. This one is going to be, uh, I need the calculator to do it, right? Because it's not going to be whole numbers. So either way, expand it yourself, do, solve it yourself, or do it with the TI. Now, you should get two answers for V1. One of them is going to be equal to its original value. Okay? The original value, the 2 kilogram mass was coming in. What was the original velocity that the 2 kilogram mass was coming in? 3. So one of your answers is going to be 3. Okay? Elastic problems, elastic collision problems, they always, uh, that's what always happens. You get two answers. One of them is equal to its original because that way you conserve kinetic energy, you conserve momentum. If there's no collision taking place, then you conserve all three variables. So this means there's no collision happening. But that's not the choice we want, 
right? So that's how you know if you did it right or wrong. You, one of your answers should be equal to 3. And then the other answer is the answer we're looking for. So either put that into the TI or do it yourself. Tell me what you get. could be because the 2 kilogram can hit the 10 kilogram and bounce back. Okay, yeah, makes sense. It's okay. Did you get two answers? Yeah, three. Uh, three okay, so then you, we know I'm sure you're right. Okay, <laughs> if you got two answers and one of them was three, then that's, that's it. So then it's negative 1.54 is the good one. Okay, now once you get that, of course, then you can just put it into the other ones, so for the other variables. V center of mass is going to be five, uh, 3 minus V1 over 5, right? So 3 minus negative 1.54 divided by 5 is going to be, you, you add the two negatives, it's going to be uh, 4.54 divided by 5. So that's going to be 0 0.108, uh, right? Uh, I got nine. No, wait, no, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. 0 0.908. Eight. And that's a meters per second. So V center of mass is 0 0.908 meters per second. And uh, omega final is going to be, um, then we put it into that equation, 5.4 minus 1.8 times V1 so then the two negatives again become p positive Point six one three rads per second. Okay, so there's your three variables. Now, in between these three, between these two problems, the inelastic version of this and the elastic version of the problem, which one is a little harder? Which one would you say is harder? I think the inelastic, in a weird way, is uh, harder. Usually inelastic problems are easier in chapter 9, right? When it comes to linear momentum, inelastic is easier because there's less variables to worry about. But in this case, I think inelastic is harder. Because when, it's, uh, when uh, it gets stuck, it moves the center of mass. You have to find the new center of mass. You have to find the moment of inertia about that new center of mass. So there's more trickier stuff happening with an inelastic collision. This one, there's more equation, but it's a little e straightforward, more straightforward, I see. So which of the two am I going to put? Ah, that's a mystery. What? Okay. So now, let's go back to my prediction. What's the total at the top point?